Hi, we're here today at the Rochdale Community Garden on the south side of Brisbane. Now I'd have to say there's been a lot of um, resurgence, or not even resurgence, but a lot of interest and activity around the country, not just in South East Queensland, with creating community gardens around the suburbs. Now, I think there's a lot of reasons behind that, that, that that's happening and I think it can be due to, to lack of space, it can be due to a sense of wanting people wanting more community and discussing gardening with like-minded people. So today we've come down here to talk to um, Graham, welcome to Blooming in Brisbane, yes, to welcome. find out a little bit more about this wonderful garden here at Rochdale. So Graham, how long has the garden been running for and what was the, the catalyst? Was there a few people that were desperate for a garden to garden in? What, what got the, the whole ball rolling here for this garden to be, to be started? Well, the garden started just over two years ago and it was donated by the, this piece of land was donated by the gentleman who owns it and uh, what we have 1.6 hectares and um, there was a, a movement within the community, I feel, they thought that we needed to get together because gardening is not just about gardening, it's about people and bringing forward ideas and using that, that, that was I think the catalyst to, to, to bring com uh, Rochdale Community Garden together. Okay, so, so the sense of community and do you think it is possibly because people have a lack of space these days that they, they don't have room to grow lots of various types of fruit trees and vegetables? Absolutely, it's um, you know, we, we're now in sort of small size allotments so, and um, so, you know, there isn't the, as you say, the capability to grow fruit trees, large fruit trees, that type of thing. People are planting more in pots and that type of thing. So to come down here, you can grow your big fruit trees, you can have extended um, uh, vegetable gardens so that people can grow a whole variety of vegetables. It's just a great way to, to, uh, to enjoy nature's gifts. And I suppose too, when you have this, this community or a group of people, how many members are actually um, a part of this garden at the moment? Uh, 30 members, yep. and uh, that changes, and, and, but they're from various age groups. We've got young families who bring their children down here, to, right through to elderly people like myself, um, who's retired, and this is a great way to spend your retirement, just to get involved with people in gardens, and. You learn so much. And that's, a, that's probably a key word, learning. I suppose some people that might be at home on a small block or even a big block might think, I don't even know where to start. I'd like to have a vegetable garden. And joining uh, a local organic community garden can be a great way to actually find out how to do it and gain knowledge. And, and like yourself or you know, other people that are older maybe who've been doing it for a while, they can then share that knowledge back, I suppose. that's a. Uh, what happens here? You find that there's people here wanting to learn as well? Absolutely. Um, you know, I often recount the, uh, the tale of having a young child here, uh, showing them the garden, and I said um, to them, uh, do you know where bananas come from? And they said, yes, yeah, supermarket. Mummy goes there every week. And I said, come and have a look at this tree down the back, and I identified a banana tree for them. And this is the opportunity to, to educate people, not just old people but people from a young age right through to tell them what gardening is about. Where, where, where your food comes from where and how, how you can actually grow it yourself grow and it. you probably find with children too I know having children myself is sometimes when you grow it they're more likely to actually have a go at eating it then aren't they too? Absolutely it's uh, it, you know, it's, a, it's incredible to watch um, uh, children sometimes down here at our working bees on Sunday to um, pick a little cherry tomato and and place it in and uh, mm, you can see the look of delight yeah. on their face because there's nothing better than a homegrown vegetable. That's fantastic. And so you do offer not only obviously, uh, I think you've, you've mentioned, what, what day is it per week everyone comes down? Right. Well, we have our working bees every Sunday. Yep. Uh, during the cooler months we start at one o'clock and uh, during the warmer months we start at two o'clock and we go for a couple of hours and then we all get together and have our afternoon cuppa we all contribute to that and, uh, and that's a good opportunity then to sit around and relax and talk about not even Gardening this garden, questions, that's yep. right, but our gardens at home, that type of thing. And I have to say, you know, for me it wasn't all about gardening. I learned how to do paving. Yep. I'd never done that before, uh, building garden beds, that type of thing. 
and uh, it's it's just a fantastic uh, thing to do. Wonderful. And that's and these ones that we the allotments that that the community garden all work in together are the ones that are around us here at the moment, yes, the aren't one that they? You can see here. This is the community area, and when people come in, they uh, we work, we plant, and then we harvest, and people uh, can take home as much of the harvest as they like, and. Uh, they share it with their friends if they want to. Uh, that's what community gardens is all about. And people can actually also um, have their own allotments. You know, they can pay for a set allotment that's just theirs alone to, to, to that, grow. That's right, yes. Uh, they can uh, uh, come in and if we have allotments available, they're not always available, but when an allotment becomes available, if you want to pay a, an extra fee, you can have that allotment, grow your own vegetables or whatever you want to grow there. Yep. And, uh, yeah, you harvest your own.